Let's continue with Unit 8 on quadratic equations and functions. We've spent a number of lessons talking about how to solve quadratic equations. We're going to get into how to graph quadratic equations because this will help us with the final method on how to solve quadratics by graphing. First, we need to know how to graph them. So let's just start off by reviewing a little bit. This is a linear function, and it's called linear because, well, this graph is a line. If I were to in Put the points into a table and put the points into a table um, I would get these values and then when I plot the points uh, its graph would form a line uh, so keep in mind that you can graph any equation by creating an XY table an input output table and substituting values into your equation and finding what you get so no matter what you do, you can always create a table. So if I'm going to begin learning how to graph a quadratic, quadratics are known by, uh, they have a power of 2 as their largest power. So uh, any of this form, we call this the parent function of the quadratic formula, uh, with degree 2, uh, we say these are quadratics. So it's degree 2. Um, and these quadratics, let's say I graph this one, make a table, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for my x values, and substitute those in. Negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. Once I get those points, I can plot those on a graph. And if I were to connect those, notice they wouldn't connect very smoothly, so we make a smooth curve. And this smooth curve is known as a parabola. And when we form this parabola, uh, we'll notice that, well, they both point the same direction. Both endpoints, or not endpoints, but both ends of the function end up going up. They could both go down, but the U-shaped curve is known as a parabola for the quadratic. Um, and we could add values after it, um, many different things we can do with that. So as I mentioned before, the base or the parent function, uh, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, we call this a quadratic function uh, because it's a degree 2. It's a nonlinear function written in standard form. Uh, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. And we've learned that a little bit when we talked about our quadratic formula. Uh, a can't be 0, otherwise 0 times x squared would give us 0. It'd be back to a linear function. So as you fill in these notes, these are the main things, um, the main uh, features of the quadratic function, main vocabulary that we'll talk about. Uh, as we talked about before, the U-shaped graph, we call that the parabola. Uh, and the, the parent function is y equals x squared. And then everything is based off of that. We can shift the graph uh, depending what our different values of c and b are. It shifts the graph, makes it narrower or wider. Uh, but we base everything off of x squared, the basic parent quadratic function. The lowest or highest point is known as the vertex. Um, it's that point at the peak or at the very bottom uh, where the curve starts to come back around. So in the first one we looked at, you know, it's right that point right there. And if we were to divide that right in half, um, that is known as our axis of symmetry, that point that goes through the vertex, which splits our parabola into two equal sides. So let's start off by taking a look at um, our basic quadratic function. And if we insert some values, we, we did this already, so negative 2. I don't know why that's not working. So negative 2 squared is 4. Um, Negative 1 squared is 1. Uh, 0. 1, 2. Okay. And when 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. And as we take a look at our points as they're plotted on the graph, notice I can draw that smooth curve. That's not very smooth. Uh, connect all those points. i got to work on my drawing a little bit. Uh, but that's our parabola. Uh, hopefully you're 
you'll draw yours a little bit better. But your vertex is that lowest point. Vertex in this case is 0, 0, and the axis of symmetry goes through that. You can see this vert. Uh, so my axis of symmetry would be x equals 0 because it's the line that goes through the x axis at 0. Uh, so I know if this is at 3, 9, reflect across negative 3, 9. That's why some of these points here, uh, you see, are the same values because we got that axis of symmetry. So now we're going to explore what this effect A has on uh, the quadratic function. And once we figure that out, we'll take a look at what C, what effect that has on the function. And then we'll also take a look at what B does. Uh, so let's go into Desmos and do some exploring. Okay, so I would recommend that you uh, click on this link and you play around with uh, this in Desmos. So you get this, you can play with the sliders, change the A values, you can change the B values, you can change the C values as well. Notice right now this equation is just Y equals X squared. Um, I haven't done anything to the other sliders. Those are zero, so my B's and C's are nothing. So right now that's my function. And notice what happens. Let's first of all see the effect that A has. So as I change these values, uh, let's try to figure out what happens when I uh, the A is positive. Now the A is negative. Uh, so hopefully you see that when it's positive, the parabola opens up. When it's negative, the parabola opens down. And as the values get higher and higher, uh, the parabola gets narrower. And as we get negative, as the absolute values of those get higher and higher, it gets narrower. So when the absolute value is higher, parabola is narrow. When it's smaller, it's wider. All right, so let's change now and see what C does. If I just add a C value, what happens? My C value is 5. Now what importance does that have? My C value is negative 5. Notice the graph shifts up and down based on C. And... Let's take a look at the B value. B by itself looks like it shifts the graph left and right in kind of a reverse parabola. Um, so it's going to you know, shift in comparison with some of the other values. So let's change A and B. Uh, so when B is positive, the graph shifts left. When it's negative, it shifts right. And let's change our C a little bit. So C is two. Notice our y-intercept is also two. And no matter what I do to b, our y-intercept stays that. What I do to a, our y-intercept stays there. So c is going to give us our y-intercept. That'll be important to know. So play around with this a little bit more uh, if you want to get to know your parabolas a little better. Uh, but we're going to get going and do some more practice with uh, that in our notes. So what I would like you to do is to graph this function by first of all creating a table. Uh, let's start with the values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, put those values into the graph and uh, plot the graph and then figure out the vertex, axis, of symmetry, domain, and range, x and y intercepts. Uh, but before you do that, let's just do some visualization and compare it to y equals x squared. What is the graph going to look like? Uh, is it going to be narrower, wider, open up or down, shift up or down? Well, since this is a negative 5 for my A value, I know it's going to be opening down and it's going to be uh, narrower uh, than, let's say this is Y equals X squared. I know it's going to be narrower since it has a higher absolute value. And that's not drawn very well. And then since it's plus 2, it's going to be shifted up on the graph at its intercept y-intercept is going to be negative 2. So pause the video and come up with your values and then plot it and come up with that information. When you're ready, restart the video. So these are values I got for this function compared to y equals x squared. I'm going to substitute negative 2 squared is 4 times negative 5 is negative 20 plus 2 is negative 18. Uh, so I plotted those points. I got my parabola opening down, as we said before, uh, narrower than our parent function. 
um, and it intercepts at 2. So vertex is 0, 2. Um, so remember, we get that um, it's the highest point. Let me get a color here to highlight. So it's at the highest point, and um, it's a point when I draw the line through, it gives us our vertex, or our axis of symmetry, x equals 0. Our domain, uh, we see, will be all real numbers for x. Uh, no matter what I put in for x, I can get a value. Range is going to be less than or equal to 2. Because those are the only values that I, I get from my y, since everything goes down to infinite, negative infinity. Y-intercept is 0, 2. X-intercepts, those are kind of hard to find uh, for this particular uh, function. But what I did is I substituted 0 in for y. And I solve for x. Uh, and that will give me my intercepts. Uh, so I subtracted 2 from both sides. And then I needed to divide by negative 5. So I get 2 fifths equals x squared. And then I took the square root of that. And that gave me plus or minus uh, 0.63 uh, for my x values. So if you have a graphing calculator, we can click on those or find those intercepts um, using our TI calculator or on Desmos. Now, a uh, couple of things we want to keep in mind there uh, when, as we talked about the A value, uh, we call it a vertical stretch. I like to call it a narrower uh, parabola and a vertical shrink if it's between 0 and 1. Uh, just talk about it being wider. Uh, when it's negative, uh, it's a reflection across the x-axis. So vertical stretch when a is less than negative 1. Actually, that should be when a is greater than negative 1. And vertical shrink if it's between 0 and negative 1. And then we just see that the uh, parabola translates up or down based on C. If it's positive, it translates up. Negative, it translates down. So some of the key things we looked at on that Desmos graph. Now, a couple of uh, conceptual things, things that we can uh, kind of understand about a parabola is, well, what do we need to graph a parabola? How can we graph it a little bit easier than, you know, maybe having to come up with a table of five different points? Well, I think this axis of symmetry would be very important because that would be our line of reflection. If I get a point over here, I can reflect it across. Uh, so if we look at this bottom graph, is that enough information? I've got the vertex uh, right here, and I've got the axis of symmetry, and I've got a point over here. Well, I could reflect that point across. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it goes six across. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's as many points as we need to graph a parabola, three points. Two points for a line, but a parabola, we need uh, three points so we can find its curve. Uh, so now if I have this equation, I've got the vertex. Uh, does it open positive or negative? A value is positive, so it opens up. What other information do I have? Well, I know C is my intercept. So I know it's going to cross at 1. Well, if I know that, hey, that gives me some good information. It's going to reflect across right here. So I could draw my parabola that way. Okay. And how about this one? Do we have enough information right now? Well, here's my intercept. And here's my axis of symmetry. What else do I need? Well, I need another point. Well, how can I find another point? Well, my axis of symmetry is 1. Well, if I know that, I just plug in 1 and see what I get. Well, 1 squared is 1. And then times a the negative is negative 1, plus 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3. So I know my y value will be 4. So 1, 4. And then I can reflect that point across. So really we see if we just use our intuition, and what we know about parabolas, we just need to find a few points, especially that axis of symmetry. So uh, we talked about um, that and we explored that on Desmos a little bit. Let's talk more about this B value now. Uh, we know all this information. Uh, but B, we talked about, kind of shifts that graph left-right. And there's a special connection 
this axis of symmetry. This is going to be very important. So in order to find this axis of symmetry, uh, we take negative b divided by 2a. You might find that's a little bit familiar. Remember, that's the first part of the quadratic formula. Um, because we take the quadratic formula, this is the first part of it, and then we add different values to find our roots. So uh, this value, when we plug those in, that will give us our axis of symmetry. Uh, and that will help us find that, that axis of symmetry, which we can plug in the x value to find our vertex. We can always find our y-intercept, and then we could always reflect that across. So if we can find those few points, we'll be in business. So let's do some practice with that. Let's find our axis of symmetry. Uh, you'll want to remember how to do that. It's in the opposite of B over 2A. So let's remember our B value. So let's do the first one. Our B value is 12. So negative 12 over 2 times A. What's A negative 2? So negative 12 over negative 4. And this is our X because the axis of symmetry goes through the x-axis. So x equals negative 12 over negative 4, which will be positive 3. So my axis of symmetry will be x equals 3. Now where would the vertex of that graph be? Well, the vertex would be when the x-coordinate is 3. So I plug 3 back in, and I'd say, well, the y-coordinate is negative 2 times 3 squared plus... 12 times x, well, x is 3, minus 7. So 3 squared is 9, times negative 2 is negative 18. 12 times 3 is 36, minus 7. So y is equal to negative 18 plus 36, which is 18, minus 7 is 11. So y is 11. So the vertex uh, would be 3, 11. Okay, so let's look at how we could graph that function. I'll go into Desmos and we'll graph that and see if we're right. All right, so our axis of symmetry is x equals 3. Uh, so I can just take that point, or that, and then my axis of symmetry will go through there at x equals 3. And we said our vertex was at 311. And we just need to find another point to reflect it across. Um, which point can we find? Well, we can find our, um, oh, what's that point called? Um, yes, it's the y-intercept. Yes, I can't think today. So let's try that again. So it goes through 3. Is our axis of symmetry. There's an uh, intercept at negative 7. So I'll reflect across 1, 2, 3. Count 1, 2, 3 over. At 6, negative 7 is also a point, and our vertex was at 311. So I could just draw my parabola uh, through there. My hand's not very steady. Let's check the graph and see what it looks like. Were we right? Well, yeah, my parabola wasn't drawn very well, but uh, we had all the right points. Okay, so that's how we can graph uh, equations with a b value in there. Find its axis of symmetry and vertex first, and then. Uh, go from there. So why don't you try this one? Um, follow the steps, uh, come up with your axis of symmetry, find some points, whether you include different x or y values. Um, so here it suggests that you choose x and y values less than the x-coordinate of the vertex. So choose values close to the axis of symmetry, one above, one below. That'll work. Or you can just find that um, y-intercept and reflect it across. So restart the video when you're ready to see what it looks like. Okay, so as we work through the problem, we know that the parabola is going to open up. If it doesn't, we did something wrong because our A value is positive. So when we have a B value in there, we know it's going to be shifted left to right. How much? Well, we figure by finding our axis of symmetry. So X equals negative B over 2A. So I've got the opposite of B, which would be positive 6, divided by 2 times A. A is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Plug that into the equation, and I get y equals negative 1. So one of my points is 1, negative 1. 
plot that. That's my vertex. So vertex is at 1, negative 1. And uh, then uh, what I can do is I can plot that line and reflect. So I know that my intercept has to be at 2 because that's my C value, 0, 2. And if I know that's where my y-intercept is, I can reflect that across over here to 1, 2, or 2, 2, rather. Um, and if I can't remember that, just choose some values. If this is my vertex, choose a point um, one less or one higher, because that will keep your calculations smaller. If I go 5 to the right, it would be a very large number and make our calculations harder. So. If you don't know, just choose points into your table and select them as you go. Otherwise, use your intuition and uh, figure out a point and then reflect it across. All right, so that's what we learned about uh, how to graph um, a quadratic function. Uh, just one final note about the maximum and minimum values. That's a special name for the vertex. And remember, we can find if it has a maximum or minimum value, um, well, if it's opening up, it's going to have a minimum. If it's opening down, it'll have a maximum. So in this function, f of x equals negative 3x squared minus 12x plus 10. If you can visualize that, you see it's opening down. So it's going to have a maximum value. All right. So you'll get to work on graphing those in standard form. Next time we'll learn vertex form and intercept form.